Welcome. This video is about quadratic systems of inequalities. Now, a system of inequalities problem generally refers to having uh, two linear inequalities that you've probably seen before. So you'd have this sort of thing going on. Or you'd have one line here. And maybe it was shaded down. And then also you would have some sort of potentially dotted line going up. And it's shaded up. And then your solution set is actually all of the answers that fall into the confines of both equations. Uh, that's a system of linear equations. Now with quadratic, you're dealing with basically the same thing, except we're dealing more with the relationship between a line and a parabola, or maybe two parabolas. So it's possible that my combined shading is here, up here, wherever it happens to be. Uh, a couple things that need to be in play before um, much like in the quadratic systems of equations video, I'm going to do these using a calculator so I don't have to hand draw them. Uh, there's plenty of them that do. Uh, plenty of videos out there that do draw, hand draw them, so you can find them if you need them. But I uh, just want to get into the conceptual idea of what they're looking for more than anything else. Uh, a few things that you will have to realize because of the fact that I'm doing it via calculator is I can't really get a, unless I'm using some sort of app, at least with the calculator I'm using, can't get a good look at the difference between this versus this. Now, obviously, if I'm going to do some sort of, say it's an x squared in both cases, this whole thing. Um, so anyway, if I have a line underneath, it would mean that all points inside of that graph are included, or all points on the graph are included, so there's no space between them. If I have the non-dotted line, I'm saying that these points that are actually create the boundary itself are not part of the solution set, and the real only way that I can actually sort of address that is to turn it into a dotted line. So if you see the solid line, uh, if you see the line underneath or the uh, greater than equal to in this situation, or even a less than equal to, you want to have a solid line there. And if it's a greater than or less than, you want to use a dotted line instead, just to indicate that this is a boundary, but these points, this point right here is not included. But this, since it's a greater than question, would shade up. So this point's not in, this one is. That's the difference uh, between those two things. Now, let's get to the actual questions and get this thing over with, because I'm trying to make it as short as possible, I guess. Um, the first one I'm going to look at is y is greater than or equal to x squared plus 2x plus 2, and y is less than negative x squared minus 4x minus 2. So I should note that this is a solid line, because it's got the line underneath there, and this one's going to be a dotted line. I should also say that you have to read the greater than less than components based on their relationship with y more than anything else. y is next to this, the larger, the greater end, so that means y's value is greater than x squared plus 2x plus 2. In this case, y is less than negative x squared minus 4x minus 2. So let me graph it here really quickly. Got some old stuff in there from where I was doing equations, I guess. And I'm going to go in and do x squared plus 2x plus 2. And then I'm going to click over. And I know that y is greater than. I said that earlier. Uh, so I need to hit enter a couple times to remind it to shade up. Now on the other one, it's going to be shaded down because it's y is less than, it's like the little end. So I'm going to hit enter three times. If you miss, the only way to get back around to it is to hit enter a bunch of times so you see this symbol again. And then I'll go over and do negative x squared minus 4x minus 2. Now the point I'm looking for is where they both graph uh, sort of over top of each other, I should say. And I may need to change my window because the area where that's occurring is very tight. So I'm actually going to change it to negative 10, 10. And once you start getting into the idea of quadratic graphing and things, you're going to change a window probably a lot more than you did when you were doing linear. Maybe not. It depends on how intense your linear setup was. 
Let's see if I can zoom in here. Into this general area. There you go. So as you can see, the overlap, well, if I hadn't thrown off the screen, you could see where the overlap is. The overlap is just this area right in here. That's the area that you're looking for. So that would be your uh, solution set, as it were. You'd want to look for that one little area. What I'd also want to make sure that I was doing, say I had uh, answer choices to choose from, um, that the one that is positive, the one that, I, that came in first, this would be a solid line. Whereas on the bottom, I would have to remember that this is actually supposed to be a dotted line. So if you have answer choices, that's the kind of stuff you have to look out for. They would possibly give you one where this one was dotted and this one is solid. So pay close attention. The one you type in first would be whatever you identified it as being. And then second would follow along just the same. Uh, one more I'm going to do in this uh, of this type, and then I'm, I think I'm done. because then it just ended up being a lot of the same thing over and over. y is less than x squared plus 6x plus 11, and y is equal to, or greater than or equal to, negative x squared minus 8x minus 13. Now, in this case, uh, I'm looking at the sort of the opposite of what I had before. I noticed that y is next to the little n, so this is the less one. So I could say that the first graph is less and it's dotted. The second one is greater and since it's greater than or equal to, it's solid. I put the one and the two here because once I type them in, that's the order in which they'll pop up on the screen. So I'm going to clear all this out and I probably should Go ahead and just change the windows back because now that I've zoomed it in, it'll be kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to go, and this is a less than, so I'm going to go ahead and set that up first. There's that. And then there's a greater than, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll type in x squared plus 6x plus 11. And then below I'll type in negative x squared minus 8x minus 13. And then while I make sure that everything looks normal, while I'm graphing, I should say there is there is an app that runs on the T84 Plus that will do inequalities in the sense that um, it actually does a solid job of um, setting up the shaded and dotted components. Like it'll do a greater than equal to in order to do it just a greater than, and it'll show the difference. I'm just not 100% sure you're allowed to use that application on some sort of statewide testing. So I tend to only train stuff that I know the thing can do and would allow statewide tests to still be applicable. So there you go. Or uh, ACT, SAT stuff. I don't want anybody's scores to be invalid. Now, from here, I should remember that uh, this is the dotted one, the one that goes up, because I typed it in first and it's the one that was drawn first. So in my choices, I want to pick the one that's dotted. Uh, similarly, this would be a solid one that whole thing. But it's interesting, in some ways, it still has that little bit of an overlap, but you'll notice that the part that's shared is all of this out through here. So you're going to look for one that instead of having the small little strip of overlap, because there isn't any overlap there, the overlap would be on the outside of the quadratics, uh, just based on the fact that uh, this one's a negative and it's shading up because it's greater than, and this one's a positive and it's shading down because it's a uh, less than. So uh, that's it. Uh, systems of quadratic inequalities. Uh, just make sure you pay attention to the few components that you need and uh, you can get yourself to the correct answer.